Hur kan jag gå trap sonsen trap sonsen trap sonsen trap sonsen trap Tony sons to hook jump door på land Där var stolt han dör på där var och där What's up, people? Adam Hunter here. Uh, I'm giving you another podcast this week. It's going to be awesome. We have Noad Lahat on the show today. This dude was the first guy from Israel to ever get a UFC win. How cool is that? He's in the history books. He was a UFC fighter. He's now a Bellator fighter. Great fighter. Fought the best guys in the world. Uh, beat a lot of the best guys. And I'm going to talk to him. I want to thank our sponsor, Speedweed. Listen, marijuana is legal in California. Don't have to leave your house to get it. They will deliver it right to you. Just go to speedweed.com, follow them at speedweed. They got the best marijuana, the best edibles, the best CBD. They'll give it right to you. They're great people. Mention roasted, you get $10 off, $100 or more. All right, speedweed, check them out. They are awesome. Also, you're getting all these podcasts because I have a new deal with Rockfin, R O K F I N forward slash Adam Hunter. It is a great place. Uh, I'm putting all my videos there. All my podcasts, that's why you're getting five, six podcasts a week. I put extra podcasts up there. You'll get two or three extra. Get them way before your other podcast, okay? Just You're going to get inundated with podcasts and videos, putting all my comedy up there, and uh, and they're awesome. Uh, and you also get Ben Askren's exclusive content. Him and Front Row Brian have a podcast. Uh, Mike Cernovich uh, has a podcast. Jordan Burroughs is throwing up technique videos that you can't get anywhere else. Jordan Burroughs, best wrestler in the world. Is uh, is going to be on Rock is on Rockfin R O K F I N. Um, there's great comics, great fighters. Uh, you know, Israel Mar- Izzy Martinez has technique videos over there. They got great AJ uh, Agazon has a great stuff. Check them out Rockfin.com forward slash Adam Hunter endorse me. It's only ten dollars a month, and if you and, and unlike other Patreons where you pay ten dollars for just that person's stuff, you get everyone's stuff. And you're really helping me out, and that's why I'm giving you so many podcasts. So let's talk to Noad Lahat. Uh, can't wait to talk to him. Uh, this dude is the truth. He's a, a real badass. So let's check it out. Hello? Hello. Uh, is this Noad? Yes. How are you? You're on the M.A. Roasted Podcast. It's me, Adam Hunter. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. I, I enjoyed uh, – I took the day. I watched a bunch of your fights and – and, and watch all kinds of stuff, man. You are an animal. You're, you're, you're. When I when you came to my comedy show, you looked so calm and collective and nice and peaceful. But in the, in in that octagon or in that cage, you, you're you're a beast of a man. <laughs> yeah, two different people. Two different people, man. Uh, so now you're the second Israeli fighter to ever be in the UFC. Who who's the first? Uh, uh, the first one was, uh, before Zufa, uh, was it Mor- Morty Heimick or something? Or Yeah, Morty Horstein. Yeah. You, uh, I think you lost to, uh, uh, Kiel Coleman. Okay, lost to Mark Coleman. Yep. 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 So you're the, you're, yeah, the, you're, the, you're the first guy from Israel to ever win a fight. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh, now you, 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 uh, grew up in, in, in uh, Tel Aviv. You started doing judo when you were five, and you became a black belt as well as a BJJ black belt. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a black belt in uh, in judo and uh, jujitsu. Wow. Now, uh, how's the how's the BJJ and the judo over in Israel? Are they the MMA scene? Yeah. Oh God, so much bigger in the last few years. A bunch of uh, newcomers, uh, and uh, I think in. The, the beginning of the stage, I think in a few years you'll see a, a bunch of guys coming out. That's good, man. That's good because I'm sure it was tough in the, in the beginning to get really good competition and get good uh, training over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, training there's really good. Um, what's uh, what's missing is uh, is the experience of MMA. But other than that, the good jiu-jitsu, good striking, good wrestling over there. So you can get everything. The only thing that I miss is, that, is the, the experience, but that will come. Now, I was watching one of your fights, and Brian Stan was saying that when you were going to school, missiles were flying over your head. Is that, uh, what, what, what oh, was that like? 
Um, <clears throat> well, it was 91 when uh, Desert Storm, uh, Saddam Hussein was uh, was punishing, uh, tr- trying to get back at the U.S. who was shooting missiles at Israel. <laughs> wow. I don't know, for me, for me as a kid, it was, uh, it was uh, I don't know, regular. Wow, that must have been so scary. I mean, I've never had a missile fly over my head in my life. Uh, I mean, I've had, I've shot loads over girls' heads, but that's a whole different thing. But just the fact, <laughs> that must have been insane. And then you were in the um, Israeli army. You were a paratrooper? Yes. Wow. So how, many, how many planes did you jump out of? Um, how many different planes? Yeah. <laughs> I had about uh, uh, 17, 15 jumps. Wow. And what's that like? That's fun. Really? Oh, that's crazy fun, yeah. You were I mean, scared? I mean, <clears throat> jumping out of a plane and, and not knowing if the parachute's going to work or how to land? I mean, that must have been insane. Um, I know. I mean, I, I enjoy fighting, so uh, so we yeah. have maybe different standards of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and that, so okay. So you were uh, you were in the Israeli Defense Force. Now I gotta ask you because I took Krav Maga for a couple months, and I thought it was good, but I thought they were kind of telling people the wrong thing. Like they were like teaching soccer moms what to do when a gun's pointed at you. And I, I kept thinking, like, give them your money because I think they're giving them way too much confidence. Does, does, you, does, does Krav Maga work? Well. <clears throat> Krav Maga is not a, it's not like a, it, f- first of all, it's different with the, uh, like, American schools and uh, and what you learn in the, in the military. They tell you that you're going to get stabbed if someone put a knife on you. You just choose where it's going to be. Is it going to be your arm or is it going to be your your neck? You know, it's right. not, in the, yeah, in the military, it's less, uh, less bullshit. Wow. So you learn how to, like, basically defend yourself against eight terrorists coming at you at once. Well, not defend yourself. You learn how to, to, to fight when you right. need to. Wow. So that, 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 that's the difference. It's a different mindset. Damn. Man, you're, you're, you're a badass. So, and then, so, you, <laughs> so you're seven or no, you make it to the UFC. They said you hadn't, <clears throat> you hadn't smiled in three years, they were saying. Uh, they said you were the most intense guy. Then you're, you're up. To your first fight I watched against uh, Jeffrey Pepe. You were winning that fight. It was pretty even. And then he threw a flying knee from hell. Was this, was this the first time you'd ever been hurt in your entire life? Um, <clears throat> I don't. I don't know if I don't remember. It. Does it count? Does what count? Yeah, you're right. If you remember, it count. Right, exactly. That's what Ben Aston said. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, shit happened. Now, I mean, was that shocking to you? Did you? I mean, because you probably thought at that point you were unbeatable. Um. I was. Uh, I was. A, I was more than seven. I think I had, I had a bunch of fights that won on sure dog. But um, no, I competed my whole life. I was. Uh, my whole life, I competed. So you, you pick up uh, losses along Hello? the way, and, and you, you hear me? That flying knee from hell, um, and was that was that super humbling for you taking that first L, or were you able to kind of just bounce back? So, <clears throat> I was uh, I was competing my whole life. So it's not my first loss, um, right. and and I was being pretty humble. Uh, being aggressive doesn't mean I was a uh, cocky piece, but um, no, it just honestly, it just uh, I took. Uh, uh, mandatory the two months off no contact I, I came back right after I trained was so hungry hungrier than ever and uh and I fought in San Jose a few months after and uh, and I picked up the victory on uh Steven Tyler yeah that and that was a great fight but that guy you keep fighting these awkward guys like Steven yeah. Tyler such an awkward guy he's so hard to look good against I don't know anybody who looks good against him um, I I look good against him. Yeah, except for you. You look good against him. But everybody else who fought that guy, it's hard. Yeah, and there's, it's, there's, some guys are like cockroaches, just fucking hard to kill. 
<laughs> yeah. And then you beat Nicholas Backstrom, which was pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Also a tough guy from Sweden. And Diego Rivas, you were killing him. You almost finished mm-hmm. that in the first round, and then that fucking flying knee again. Yeah. I was uh, I was very sick for that fight. I just couldn't uh, I couldn't perform. I, I took him down, but I couldn't squeeze for the chokes, and I was just standing there, and and he just ran at me, and then yeah, oh and, my uh, God. I didn't I didn't even react. I was uh, uh, ah, it happens, it happens, but it's okay, it's all right. Cause <laughs> it, cause, cause then you came back. And you, you, you won two fights. You, you, you came back, and first you beat Scott Cleave in Israel. What was that like uh-huh. fighting in, a, in Israel? Oh, that was amazing. Um, yeah, 10,000. It was 10,000 10, the year after we sold out, 12,000. Um, it was amazing. The crowd was amazing. It was fighting at home. You know, uh, it was maybe one of the first fights I didn't get booed because it was my own crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was fun. You know that was awesome. And then you beat uh, um you beat Lloyd Carter also, who's a guy who who didn't you said after the fight didn't want to fight you like he was kind of like avoiding you, right? Yeah, I had to chase him around. So the fight before that, I I kicked uh um uh, what is his name Cleve. I kicked him, and I broke my foot in that kick like the first a minute of the fight. Right when I put it back, I feel like needles on my in my leg, and I, I right away you know tell myself like, oh shit, we have to finish this. Shoot double leg, and I choke them. Uh, so then coming back to the other fight, I still had that. That was my right foot. I still had that that foot a little uh, achy, and uh, yeah, he he refused to fight, but he didn't want to grapple, so his way was just running backward the whole fight until again yeah, I grabbed a hold of him and uh and choked him. Yeah, that was awesome. Then they had up against Henry Corrales. He's a tough guy. Tough mm-hmm. fight. Very close fight, you and Henry. Um yeah. Henry, and cause the two guys in Belgium that you lost to, Henry Corrales and Barry and Caldwell. You think the Caldwell yeah, fight so. was fight you think that was stopped too early, the Caldwell fight? <laughs> Way too early. I was totally fine. There was no reason to stop it. You know, I don't want to talk shit about the ref or anything. It was, I should, I don't know. He he shot like low, low fucking single, single kind of tripped me. And uh, I worked my way up. He punched me in the back of the head. And the ref jumped in and stopped it. I was, I was totally there. And, you know, I, I was trying to set something up. But, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, it um, happened. Guess, hey, man, look, you came back, yeah. you, beat, you beat Brian Moore, uh, which is awesome. Um, so now, I mean, look, you got a, you're, obviously you're a great fighter. you got a record of 13-4. and four. Do you have another fight on the uh, books? Um, right now, I'm a uh, working contract, so uh, we'll see what's next. Now, as, as far as the, uh, the 145 tournament, are you uh, a uh, reserve guy for that? Um, no, actually, I... I been promised to be on that, but I uh, I didn't want to. Really? How come? Um, I have other things in mind. I mean, a million dollars? I mean, what what else you got for a million bucks? Come on, man. Yeah, I got something coming up. It's, right. Well, it's not it's not a you fight a fight and you get a million dollars. You have to fight. What is it? Five fights. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To potentially get the me. It's the million dollars. Uh, the PFL, for example, uh, which uh, I almost signed at the beginning of the year. They, you advance and you make the money with uh, with that. So you go there. Everybody's gonna fight basically for free in that tournament, and only the winner gets. Ah, uh, that top sucks. Get, yeah, so everybody's still gonna fight the same contract they have, and uh, you get five fights or whatever, and then you're gonna fight the the top guy to win the million. So. Only one guy out of everybody, out of the 16, get paid. Oh, I didn't know that. That sucks. Yeah, it is, now, yeah. Now, I think I think Henry is fighting Caldwell. Who do you think is going to win that fight, since you fought both of them? So, uh, hmm. so when I fought Corrales, we went, I won first one, he won second one, third one, I think I kicked him, slipped, something like that, he ended up 
winning that round. Um, he, I took him down first one, and he was a little slippery, a little more than usual. And uh, I kind of got mad, and uh, I just stood with him. We both finished the fight with 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 around 15, 20 stitches. Uh, wow. Yeah, we just stood up and banged because I, <laughs> I got mad and I didn't want to work my uh, my wrestling. Um, I think if it's go to the if it's go to the ground, Karaz gonna have a hard time to get up. But um, what is it? This is not a finisher. He doesn't does he doesn't have submission game. He mostly holds, and uh, and Corrales is is unless. Unless someone choke him, he's fucking Mexican. Unless you choke him, uh, I don't think you can pull him out. I hit him with some, some the heavy shit. Like I hit him with like baseball bat. Like I saw his head go all the way back, chin up, and he come back and. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, he has a he has a good chin, and uh, and I you you saw that with uh, uh his last fight with uh with Pico. I saw yeah. with Pico. Pico got heavy hands. I boxed with him uh, at AKE. He got he's really good hands, and he tagged a few Corrales a few times, and and Corrales got chin on him. So, what do you think Pico's issue is? What is issue? Yeah, like how come he's not putting it all together? Um, well, I think he's so good at two areas. It's like the area that combat, but he's young. He, I, I think Beltro basically ruined him during first fight at the garden in front you know that co-main event and and he was 20 what one never fought in his life uh it's this i don't care what sport you come from unless it's like boxing or something like that it's not the same it's not the same when you walk out it's not like wrestling or gc tournament it's different and yeah. he's very he's very young he's very eager to uh to, to have uh you know those big uh, highlights, and I was I was like that in his age too. But but I would, you know I was choking people. He's uh, he I think he just they put him up too fast. Yeah, no, I, I agree. But also I think that his fight IQ. It seems like he, you know, a lot of these guys team alpha male that come from a wrestling background. The first seven or eight fights they're just wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. He just wants to go out there and swing. You know, yeah, and that's a very dangerous tactic. I mean, well, he's I, a very good boxer. Like he's not only a wrestler. Like I, I far boxing with him. He's a very good boxer, but MMA is not boxing. It's different. It's a little more dirty. It's it's a different range. I think he just didn't spend enough time to put it together, and usually that time needs to happen in the ring. And. Right. Uh, and I think he didn't put that time. A fight that got signed today is uh, Donald Cerrone against Justin Gaethje. Ooh, who do you I like that, that, yeah. Who, who, who do you like in that fight? Ooh, I like me in that fight. This is crazy. <laughs> I just gotta, I just want to sit there and watch. Um, it's good because so uh, Cerrone likes to fight people that are that nice to him and like to explain kind of. Gaethje is not like that. Gaethje is uh, he's, he's very tenacious, you know, coming forward, full aggressive, don't care, you hit me, I'm going to hit you. And, and fuck, every, every fight that he's in is, uh, is uh, entertaining. And uh, Cerrone is very technical. I don't know. <laughs> but I think I think I think I love Gaethje your picks got this because way. you start off you, you give me both good points and then you don't make a pick you go yeah Gaethje you no know, I got I got Gaethje on that one I think it's too uh, too aggressive for uh, for Cerrone style Cerrone needs someone to stand uh, with him uh, to pick them apart he he's he's conventional striker he likes to stand in that distance and Gaethje running forward. Totally offset. The way to fight a technical striker is to brawl, and that's what Gaethje does. He fucking brawl, and I think uh, he get the edge on that one. That's where my money. Now I gotta talk to you about something else. Now, like you're obviously, I think you're my dad's favorite fighter. My dad, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm Jewish. Uh, I'm Jewish, but my dad is convinced that everyone's anti-Semitic, 
and everyone hates the Jews, and that you know right. he's very pro-Israel, and he says that um, he says that all these people that there's a huge rise of anti-Semitism coming up, and he's very kind of and 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 you're also I mean you actually fought in the, in the Israeli army, but I, I saw you today tweet about about um about Representative Omar and how. Uh, and how there's this huge anti-Semitism movement going on. Talk to me. Tell me. Tell me what is it, what it's really like out there. Um, well, tell you what. There, there, there's like a big bias in uh, in uh, in the world. Actually, if you think about it, Israel is uh, maybe eight million people, country surrounded by Syria, Gaza, Egypt, Jordan, Syria. You know. Afghanistan, Iraq, and somehow Israel is the problem. Well, if you look at that, that's probably the country where the least Arabs or Muslims died in the whole Middle East in the last decade or so. Um, so the fact that 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 bitch is even talking about it is just show, because she has no business. Deal with your representative. You know, you got nothing to do with the other side of the world. Nobody over there has voted for you. So deal with your people, but it's a it's a, it's a toxic a lot of times to just uh uh so people won't ask her the real questions. It's easy to just oh it's uh so instead of saying it's the Jews oh it's Israel Israel do that and she said that that American Jews can't be trusted because they have other uh, while at the same time she's uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, uh, <laughs> supporter. It's uh, so the, the the fact that so in America so far people didn't really heard those voices, but they're coming here too. Uh, you see here in Europe, in um, uh, Europe, in Europe, in the Middle East, around. But now when they come into the states and you hear it in the house, and it's a problem, and it's a problem that that she can say stuff that that. Obviously anti-Semite, but and it's okay. But if I will talk about any other minority, black, gay, Muslim, whatever, I'm a racist or whatever. Right. So. So it, Yeah. So think about it. The fact that that this little country even make it to the to the media here, 15 hours flight away, while this country involved in two wars. But they talk about what's going on in that little country. It's a it's a big and great bias. I mean, so and, but why is it that uh, that all these countries want to blow Israel off the map? Is it because they they think they've occupied the land? I mean, it was after World War II. They were given this little strip of land because the Germans were trying to you know get rid of Hitler had to get rid of all the Jews. They gave them this little piece of land. Israel built this beautiful democracy. And is it jealousy or is it people that like explain it to me? Oh, the whole history. So, okay, um, 1945, British uh, conquered from the Turkish, from the Turk, from the Ottoman Empire. No, sorry, I'm whoa, way wrong. 1914, uh, uh, First World War, uh, right. conquered from uh, from the Ottoman Empire. From the Ottoman Empire, it was. Uh, uh, basically, the the ally was uh, France. Uh, Britain fought the German and the and the Turkish, um, with the promise that their job was to make that land uh, space for the Jews, because already then the Jews had a problem, and that land was empty. It was a little bit of Jews, a little bit of Arabs. Uh, 1947, after the the war. A mass of Jews escaped from uh, escaped from from not only Europe. Uh, my family escaped from Yemen because uh, uh, their neighbors decided that whatever's going on in, in uh, Israel, it's uh, their fault. So they start slaughtering them. My mom's family escaped from Afghanistan because their neighbors decided that they have no place there anymore. So Jews, and at the same time, there was a great migrant in the whole world. Uh, after World War II. So a lot of Jews escaping uh, Europe, escaping the Middle East, the only place that accept them was Israel. Right. Uh, 
Yeah, they come in there and and uh, all the fake Arab nationalities, you know, like Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, those aren't really real. They're all fake. They're all made up by uh, by the British and the French. And they they decided uh, to create another one to fight the Jews, the the, the Arabs did. And it was uh, Palestinians because they never existed before 1967, before uh, six different states, Arab states, which is Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Egypt, Iraq, decided to fight Israel. Israel beat them all in six days, conquered uh, their land. And uh, that day, the Palestinian problem was born. Before that, they had no problem. And every, every, like, just every time you hear about something in Israel, it's purely anti-Semitic because there's no reason for that little country to be in the news in a country full of problems like, like the U.S. Yeah, no, I no, no. I was told that the other country when I was growing up, they told us the other countries and 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 Syria, Lebanon, that their government starves their people, that they take all the money, and then yeah. and because Israel doesn't, they have a democracy where people are prosperous, that they blame the Jews for their own problems as opposed to. Well, blaming. it's it's uh it's it's Israel basically ruined the the Muslim uh the Muslim uh conquer of the whole Middle East for them because. Uh, they call it uh, Haram. It's a uh, it's a conquered land, so that means because at some point the Muslim conquered that land, uh, so it's considered a uh, Muslim land no matter what. So they but but it's changed in the Middle East today because the Middle East is the people are smarter. There's the internet today. They can't buy the bullshit of the government, uh, feed them or organizations, you know, that trying to keep them stupid. And Israel got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, deals work with uh, with with the, the Muslim uh, the Muslim world today. The the only countries that really uh, the only countries that really like anti Israel is Syria, Lebanon, and and Gaza. The other and Iran, you know, the other countries have full on business relations and and intelligence relationship with Israel because they. All of them want to fight the crazy ones too, like Iran, you know, uh, that that basically running all the terror organizations in the world. And uh, I, the way I see it, things only get better. So when you hear like a lot of, you know, far left people say, you know, uh, occupy Palestine or free Palestine. Yeah, they can go fuck themselves. I mean, because... You're a guy that is actually, you know, jumping out of planes to like, you know, to basically <laughs> fight fight these wars that are ridiculous. I mean, does that really bother you when you when like you hear a lot of people in America say that? Well, I just know it's uh, they're just misguided and stupid. That that's about it. Because uh, cause today with the top today, you're looking for victims. If someone is poor and and. Uh, that, that means someone stole his uh, his money or land, and it's not because they're just stupid and choose to to keep fighting an endless war instead of uh, develop their land. Um, if you see what Israel did in the Middle East, look around Israel and look at Israel in, the, in 70 years. It, it, Israel is like an island, you know. It's, if you look about it, if you look at the countries surrounding Israel, they all third world countries while Israel is uh is Silicon Valley. It's uh it's a little crazy. You know, I've been to Saudi Arabia. I've never been I never wanted to get out of a country so fast in my life. I was there doing <laughs> for the military and then there were the religious police walking around and then they had a place called Chop Chop Square where they chop off your arms if you're caught stealing. Oh, yeah. Like this is like their this is their entertainment. Uh and yeah. then I I've been to Jordan, I've been to Abu Dhabi and uh, Dubai. Those places were fun. Um, but Saudi Arabia, I couldn't wait to get out of there. I mean, women couldn't drive. They would, they, they, people had to be covered head to toe. I mean, I couldn't imagine growing up there. But but that, uh, what's the name? Omar, I think she had no problem with that. They're okay. Yeah, she has no problem with, with, with like, you know, medical. Even though that country is, I think, more than a hundred times the size of Israel. 
Yeah. No, it, it's it's insane. And uh, but so I, I I like I think about like you and your life and like what you've seen and and now you came over here. You got married. You have what two kids? Yeah. Two. You're raising a family. You're fighting, uh-huh. but. Also, I think of AKA when you were over there. I mean, you must have been. Uh, it just shows you that, like, how mu- how mixed martial arts can bring everyone together. Because you're training with Khabib, right? Wasn't that one of your training partners? Yeah. Uh-huh. Khabib, yeah. Khabib's a Muslim. All those guys from Dakin are Muslims. I'm sure you guys got along. I'm sure you guys were probably brothers over there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, I, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Like, like it's not that the Catholic people killed less Jews than than Muslims. <laughs> if we <laughs> I don't care what you believe in, who you pray, if it's uh, your dog or or whatever. As long you know you say hi to me, I say hi to you. You're a good person, cool. It's like, it doesn't bother me at all. By the way, what was that like training with a guy like Khabib, who's considered the best in the world right now? What was it to train with him? Yeah. Oh, we punched each other really hard in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's 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 uh, something special. <clears throat> I mean, people say that when he grabs you, it's like it's a different kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, he's his talent above everything. It's uh, his strength. He's very very strong. Yeah, well, what is it about Dagestan and that little place? Just no, no, up. it's he's like even among the other Dagestanis, because they all every time he came to train, always they brought <clears throat> um, eight other fighters, the brothers. He is. Something special. He's stronger than, like, physically strong. He's not technically better than them, but physically, his strength is something that even even the Dagestani he's special. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's, That's why if you see if if you go look look at his fight, you know, like Barbosa or something, and, and you see when he grabbed them, you see when they realize that they can't fight it, and you see on their face like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> That's what Ali Akinta said, who was a college wrestler, college standout. He said he never felt a guy that kind of strength before. Yeah. But that's got to give you confidence. I mean, the fact that he's your training partner. Yeah, I know. You know, every time every time I go uh, and fight, I know those, those guys are nothing like the guys I train with. So. Yeah, that's got to give you uh, crazy confidence. Con- thank you for the lesson on Israel because uh, – I, you know, I always hear bits and pieces, but you hear so many different perspectives, and you get all these people saying "free Palestine" on 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 uh, Twitter, and I I, I want and people that I know and like, and like a guy like Ramsey Knight. Hey man, you know, like even when they talk about the West Bank, I grew up the West Bank, um, my my whole life. They have their own cities. The the army only go inside the cities when they need to pick people out because they go out and do silly shit. We trying to give them as much freedom, and but every time it's literally blew up in our face. So, yeah, free Palestine. They need to free themselves from those terrorists that keep hurting us. Because, uh, for example, like they're talking about the fence that we built. Before those fence, we were stormed with suicide bombers. The missiles aren't scary. The missiles come. You know, we talked about at the beginning. The missiles. The missiles there is an uh, alarm and everything. Yeah. The suicide bombers. When I was in in high school, nobody would go out to uh, on the public transportation because the the suicide bombers would go on the school buses, on the public buses, and explode. They would drive their car close to a school bus and explode. They would go inside the kindergarten, the nursery homes, the, the hospitals. When we build that fence, that shit stopped, and. And Got basically, it. every time that like, they used to, they used to be able to walk free into Israel. When the when Oslo started, the uh, the terrorist uh, organizations just uh, raised their head, and people all of a sudden were like, "Oh wait, we can take more. We don't need only that. We want everything." And people don't understand the fear of of a woman, you know, like sending her her kids to school when she's afraid a suicide bomber will kill them. They're afraid that you go. We had stories, you know, of a family going to a restaurant, and that there, there was a family story, um, a famous story of a family going into a pizza place. Eight people and four died in a suicide bomber. Two parents, two kids, you know, stuff like that, all the time. 
Wow. And and when they talk about oh they have the right they have no fucking right if I have no right to breathe. So I rather they cry on the on their loss of their right to movement over my right to breathe. It's that's the bottom line. When now is they, it yeah. when they ready to to fuck to to join the 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 rest of the world and and drop the violence? Israel will be more than happy to to you know to to turn them into Singapore, but they they don't want to. Look how many years Gaza are run by uh, by Hamas. Not one hospital, not one school. They they build nothing but terror tunnels and missiles. You know if they stay like that, fuck you, stay in Gaza. We got you know they they don't create anything. They leave everything off Israel. They get electricity, water, food. Because they don't create anything. A million people that create nothing but this. And that's that's the problem. Now, is it true also that they would strap bombs onto little kids and then throw them into Israeli waves? Oh, go, go, on, go on YouTube. You'll see that on YouTube. You'll see cases that, that little kids get stopped. When I was, uh, I tell you, so, uh, my time in the service, we had an order to... to up a, a highway from Nablus to uh, all the way to Jerusalem because we had a uh, we had the intel that that uh, a suicide bomber is on his way to uh, to Jerusalem. They told us to stop everybody, and it was hundreds of cars. When we pull out this uh, ambulance, and uh, and there was a pregnant woman there, and the officer said, "Pick her up, and she needs to stand up." And she cried, "No, I'm sick. I'm sick." Pick her up. She's laying on a vest, on a on a bump. Go to oh, the hospital. Uh, yeah, it's that kind of stuff. So, so what do you uh, do? Uh, <laughs> exactly. I don't. I mean, I've never had to deal with that before. I don't. I don't know what I would. I, I feel worse for the unborn kid. The kid didn't do anything. Yeah, you know? but yeah, but fuck the unborn kid. I think about my kid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. That's like, very I'm talking true. about me. I'm I'm not like all Israel, and I'm sure other Israelis uh, think different. This is how I think. If it's me, my kid, or anyone else's kid, fuck their kids. Yeah, you got you, you know? got to save your own kid. Of course, of course. I have a daughter too, and I would do anything I, in the world to protect her. So, I couldn't imagine um, what you must have gone through. And, you know, I mean, the fact that, like, your, your training with Khabib is probably the, the least violent thing you do all day. So <laughs> that's probably the easy part is training with eight, eight Dagestanis. Uh, yeah. No, they're good people. I'm, I, I know. I know. Of course. Um, that, how, how hard was it for you to watch Luke Rockhold? Because that's, that's an AKA oh, guy. Oh, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you know, like uh, – like DC said, this sports, uh, man, it's uh, it's hard to see, you know, one of your friends so who basically grew up together, we've been at the same gym for eight years. Um, it's not, it's not fun seeing your friends, you know, lose. But but I think I saw all my friends, Baba Khabib, everybody, you know, you, you, you at some point you eat that knee, you eat that punch, uh, you get, you lose a knee, you know. Something yeah. happened, and and it's part of the fun. I think that's why these sports give you so much high. Because when you go into the cage, it's really at the high level. It's flip a coin. Like everybody can, when you match up so close, it's it's a one elbow that slips the, the in and catch you or a kick or something. And uh, and it's not easy, you know, dodging the bullets all the time. No, I was watching the, 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 the Ben Askren. You know, he's a good yeah. friend. That was like, oh, I, I couldn't sleep all night. I, I was probably, it was it was brutal seeing your friend lose in five seconds and then have Masvidal lie down next to him. And I was like, oh. Yeah. That was rough. That was rough. That was rough. But that's a sport. <laughs> but then again, you know, it, then now it's the comeback. It's how, how are you going to deal with that? How are you going to come back from that? You know, that's what yeah. they, Real champions. It's not about getting knocked down. It's how you can get up. So yeah, you know. I think that's the. Uh, it's it's um, that's what makes fighters when you see them. 
not def- not necessarily losing, but you see them coming back and and getting you know back on the horse or getting better and. Of course, I mean as a comic, it's, it's bombing. I've, I've I can't tell you how many times I've bombed. It's probably in the in the in the thousands. Yeah, you know? now imagine but- every time you bomb. There was a concussion behind it, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and everyone in the world, every time I bomb, and people are, are, are yeah, a few of me bombing, and like, and everybody, I mean, everybody you know in the world, watch you. <laughs> oh, I, I, I mean, I give Askren so much credit because every time he posts something, everyone sends the gift of him getting knocked out. I'm just like, oh, uh. I still get that shit. Really? Oh fuck! Three years later, I still yeah, I always get that. Wow. Three and a half years. Almost four years, three and a half years. But, you know, if, fuck you, give a fuck. I've been there. What have you done? Yeah, exactly. I don't even respond to people. I say, like, ah, loser. You, of course. You take your time. You take time out of your day to search me and see what I did wrong in my life. Not wrong. Like, where I uh, I fell in my life and you shove it in my face. Like, really, you think I give a fuck? <laughs> Yeah. It's like people do it to Ben Askin. And again, someone who competed his whole life. Do you really think he cares about your opinion? No, he doesn't. Exactly. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't even, I, a guy like that also, I wonder why he's still fighting. Like, not that I wonder why, but like he probably made so much money in 1FC, so much money in Bellator, stuff from wrestling. He's a good business guy. You wonder like what is what's going to keep driving him. You know? Oh, I, I don't wonder. You wonder. I know exactly why. <laughs> Tell me. It's that fire. I think that, that the whole time he he didn't really fight the big the the, the big guys, the, the big names. And I think it's always in the back of his of his head, like, hey, do I really? Am I really the champ? Do I really do that? And and as a a, a competitive guy, as a fighter, you always want to test yourself. You want to say that. Fuck it, I fought the best guys in the world. Because everybody always holds it against him. Oh, you haven't fought this and this. And now he's fighting them. Yeah. So I know. a guy like that, he's not, he's no, not matter doing... what, <laughs> yeah, no matter what, people are going to talk shit. You feel weird. Oh, you hold him the whole time. If it's like, oh, you didn't really choke him. There was the... People always talk shit. If you yeah. care about people say, you, you fuck, you, you're going to die. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. And I'm sure he doesn't. Now, uh, my final question. I saw that you did the bottle cap challenge, right? And yes. you, you shot, you, you took out a gun, and then you shot the bottle off the thing. <laughs> now, was that, that, a, that was a real so gun? stupid. Of course it is. 357 Magnum. Are you, are you allowed to carry that? It's Nevada. Wow. How, how you, many guns do you own? Uh, more than my hands. Wow. You more than ten guns? Uh, I think that's a, that's a, around that number. Wow! I mean, wh- are you worried that someone's going to invade your house, or that there's a country going to invade you, or something? Or uh, no, I think uh, a bunch of those I got from uh, sponsors and stuff. But I have uh, me personally, the, I only purchase uh, two. Uh, the same one uh, I have uh, in the military. I don't even like shooting. I go maybe once every few months, put a magazine and put it back just to to keep. Uh, but I'm still. You need to train. You know, it's a, it's a perishable it's a perishable skill, and I'm still I'm uh, still in the military. I'm uh, on reserve, and um, so I still go and train. But I don't, I don't really like shooting. But yeah, if, okay. someone inv- if someone invades my house, you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to invade your house anytime soon. Uh, absolutely not. You'd have to be insane to do that. But, yeah, hey, you know, strange things have happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, uh, Nawad, you're a pleasure to talk to you. I'm, I'm a big fan. Thanks for coming to the comedy show, by the way. Oh, thank awesome. you very much. I had so much fun being my wife. Oh, well, thank her. And, uh, have a great week and keep up the great work. Where can people follow you on Instagram and Twitter? Yeah, if they want to see the my uh, version of the of the Battle Cup Challenge, so Noad underscore Lahat, Noad Lahat, most of my uh, my social media. Well, thank you so much, man, and uh, have a great week. Thank you very much. You too. Take care. All right, that was Noad. I, I learned a lot. Learned a lot about 
Israel and history and fighting and everything else. Uh, so thank you for listening to the podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're a fan of mine, go to adamhunter.com if you want to see me live. adamhunter.com. I got all kinds of tour dates coming up. I'm going to be in Little Rock, Arkansas in uh, late August. I'm going to be in Mississippi with Russell Peters, um, as well as Maryland with Russell Peters, August, uh, I think, 15th and 16th. Um, I got all kinds of cool dates coming up. September, I'm going to be in um, Arizona, as well as, where else am I going to be in September? Uh, Edmonton, Edmonton, Canada. And I'm going to be in Vegas in uh, October. And then November, I'm going to be in Portland, Oregon. Late August, I'm in Sacramento at Tommy T's. So check me out, adamhunter.com. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Have a great week. I'm a-